Delivery vehicles largely based on their mainstream kin get a bad rep. Injecting a dose of extravagance into an already proven formula has the potential to transform an ordinary car into an exceptional one. In the case of the Chevy Volt, GM transformed its popular plug-in hybrid into something else entirely. Based on Cadillac's 2009 Converge concept, the Cadillac ELR is GM's response to Tesla's all-electric Model S, the Porsche Panamera SE Hybrid, and to a lesser extent, the BMW i8. While sharing its 1.4-liter gasoline engine, lithium-ion battery pack, and electric motor with the Chevrolet Volt, the ELR features a more sophisticated assortment of suspension and chassis components aimed at improving handling and ride compliance. Though developed on a front-drive platform, the ELR doesn't pull from left to right under hard acceleration thanks to a unique front suspension dubbed Hyperstripe. This absence of torque steer, coupled with proprietary Bridgestone tires and adaptive damping shock absorbers, amounts to a surprisingly fun-to-drive package that's not overly harsh around town. And seeing as automakers are somehow convinced heavy steering is synonymous with sportiness, there's a sport mode that increases steering effort, keeps the gasoline engine running, and quickens throttle response. In urban settings, a trio of noise-canceling microphones and added sound insulation help keep the outside world at bay, confirming the ELR status as the Cadillac of Chevy Volts. Like, literally. <laughs> Although Cadillac engineers squeezed an additional 22 pound-feet of torque out of the Volts E-Rev propulsion system, acceleration remains the same due to the ELR's heftier curve weight. Still, a sub 8 second sprint from 0 to 60 is nothing to balk at given its hippy dippy appeal. And so long as we're on the subject, Cadillac claims the ELR can travel up to 37 miles on electricity alone, though 31 miles was the best we could muster in real world conditions. Actual recharge times range from about 4.5 hours on a 220 volt level 2 charger to more than 11 hours on a standard 110 volt household outlet. Driving with a depleted battery returned a rather underwhelming 28 mpg over a mix of city and highway driving. There are, however, alternate means of boosting efficiency. An ELR exclusive that'll have hyper milers jumping for joy is a feature called Regen On Demand, which repurposes the paddle shifters as the regenerative braking controls. Simply depress a paddle on either side of the steering wheel, and the ELR converts kinetic energy into electric stored energy. We've been driving around for about 20 minutes in traffic and haven't touched the brakes once. So if you play your cards right, you may never have to replace your brakes for as long as you own the car. Pro tip, combining regen on demand with conventional braking produces the appropriate amount of pucker power for emergency situations. Of course, the ELR is less a performance powerhouse than an exercise in contemporary design. Defining this low-slung exterior aesthetic are Cadillac's now signature vertical lighting elements, complemented by aero-contoured bodywork, and wind-cheating touches like a flush front grille with active shutters and concealed door handles. Though laden with premium materials, the ELR's cockpit imparts a somewhat showy feel compared to its rivals. Nonetheless, seating comfort up front is world-class, and outward visibility is surprisingly good in most directions. Not surprising is the lack of headroom for taller drivers and barely habitable rear seats. Just remember, in the world of 2 plus 2 cabins, 2 plus 2 equals 2. Out back, 10.5 cubic feet of trunk space means the ELR offers slightly less cargo room than a subcompact sedan. As if tight passenger and cargo space wasn't enough, operating even basic functions inside the ELR will test your skills as well as your patience. Switch on the ignition, and you're greeted to what I presume is Cadillac's answer to the THX Deep Note. And while our opinion of Cadillac's Q infotainment system and its infuriatingly unresponsive capacitor switches doesn't bear repeating, the saving grace is that unlike the XTS and ATS, the ELR center stack protrudes from the dash to keep the control interface within arm's reach. See that? Yep, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Depending on your budget, the ELR's sticker price could be the make or break factor. Opening at just under $76,000, the ELR carries a $4,000 premium over a base Tesla Model S while undercutting the Panamera SE Hybrid and BMW i8 by $22,000 and $61,000 respectively. 
The ELR and Model S also qualify for $7,500 in tax credits, along with up to $2,500 in state and local rebates. Tax incentives for the Porsche and BMW range between $3,000 and $5,000. In terms of feature content, every ELR includes touchscreen navigation with advanced voice recognition, a 10-speaker audio system by Bose, three USB ports, 20-inch wheels, front and rear parking sensors, and doors that lock as you walk away from the car. Or at least that's the intent. Toss in an extra $3,700 and you'll drive home with automatic high beam control, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control linked to GM's haptic driver's seat, and automatic collision braking. At the opposite end of the pricing equation, the ELR's residuals trail its closest rivals by a fairly sizable margin. That said, it's worth noting that no other plug-in hybrid comes within $22,000 of the Cadillac ELR. Because it's the only game in town at this price point, these prices shouldn't send you running for the hills. Especially if you don't consider the ELR as nothing more than a glorified Chevy Volt, which it's not. Factor in a high level of exclusivity and low energy costs, and the ELR actually makes a fairly strong case for itself.